What's happening, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Back with another episode of Mind Your Markets. We got a DeFi dive this week. We'll be joined by Akshay here in a second from Rivera Money to discuss their platform. But first, we'll start with the, uh, as always, the Swap School updates. Not a whole lot going on. Still trying to finalize the uh, community vault to get that out for you guys on the Mantle side to start earning some of those Mantle Journey rewards. And um, the other update is that the Swap School team will be doing an AMA with the Takika NFT um, platform, if you will. So if you guys are into that sort of thing, make sure you check that out. You'll see the announcements coming out from this team. I'm not sure on the exact time. I know everybody's time frame is kind of different. So just so make sure you guys follow along on the announcements for that. Um, but without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome my guest today from Rivera Money co-founder, Akjay. Akjay, how you doing today, bud? Hey, Brian. Great to be here. I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey everyone, glad to be here. We're super excited to have you. And as always, guys, all this stuff, information is free. What we like to do for those who are maybe new or have never seen this show before, I'm the former COO of Swapsicle Dex. And basically, I started this because, you know, I see all the questions and things out there about how people don't understand certain platforms or it's kind of overwhelming. There's so many things going on, right? Um, so I just like to bring on the founders and people who are directly involved with the projects to let you or allow them to walk you through their platform that they created, show you guys the ins and outs, the different things. Um, so that's what this is all about. But Akshay, how did you get involved in crypto and um, what kind of made you want to start Rivera Money? Yeah, so that's a long story, but uh, I'll, I'll go in there in bits. So how I get started, uh, uh, basically I come from a Web2 background. Uh, I worked for uh, when I graduated, I'm an engineer. I work, uh, when I graduated, I worked three, three and a half years in MNCs. And then I realized that, okay, uh, it's not, it's not the pace at which I would like the things to work out. Then I joined a web two startup uh, in finance itself because I was always interested in finance. And then I was like, okay, that's great. Startups are great. Finance is great. Uh, let's do more things. And then I stumbled upon this concept of blockchain and, uh, I realized that, yeah, the deeper I went, I, I, I realized that this is the future of finance and this is how it's going to be. So uh, this all happened in 2019 and uh, in 2020, I left my job and I started full time in Web3 as a learner, I would say. Uh, so I, I started learning different aspects of the Web3. I started from trading because that was cool to what I did actually, uh, because I love finance, so trading comes naturally to me. Then I moved to NFTs, explored the NFTs market. Then at that point of time, DAOs were emerging and I really wanted to understand how DAOs function, how decision making is done on blockchain and things like that. So I moved to DAOs and slowly and steadily, I touched upon every box of the blockchain industry uh, or we call it web industry. And eventually I realized that DeFi is the place where I want to be because it is just broken. I mean, in, and this is 2020 we are talking about. So DeFi is broken in the sense that if you are a DeFi native, of course, you know everything, you know what to do. But if you are a normal person with a basic understanding of tech or a basic under, understanding of finance, it's really, really hard to navigate uh, through the different protocols that exist in DeFi because there are so many complexities involved. And it's not only technical complexities, it's also the user experience or we call it ux complexities because if you pick a random person from the road and you ask them uh, hey uh, can you do bank, bank transfers and they most likely can't do it right 
But then you ask them to do, hey, let's do a crypto transfer or hey, let's do a swap on a DEX. And then and that's the point when they are like, oh, we have to select the blockchain. We have to select the token. We have to see something on the blockchain explorer and things like that. And that's where things go haywire. I mean, so we do understand that DeFi is going to be the future of finance. And I realized that the current form of DeFi is not what is going to be the future of finance because it's just too complicated. Users have to do a lot of things and it's just not simple enough. So in 2020 only, uh, that's when I met my co-founder. I mean, uh, my co-founder is a college friend of mine, uh, university from university, but uh, he was also solving some of the problems in DeFi and he asked me, hey, do you want to like, you know, uh, simplify this uh, DeFi yield generation process? And I was like, yeah, sure, because it's too difficult for me itself. So let's let's simplify this for people. And then, and that was the time when we started Rivera. And uh, the idea was to create a, a create a platform where uh, folks can generate yield on assets on crypto assets. And uh, then it gradually evolved into uh, concentrated liquidity and things like that, which we'll discuss later in the episode. But yeah. So that, that was the budding moment, I should say, that we, we decided to create a platform where people can invest their money, uh, invest their crypto assets, and even if they are not very native in DeFi, they can still generate returns on their assets with simple uh, user experience. Yeah, and we're going to get into it a little more uh, once we dive into the platform, but I would say that's probably the one big takeaway that I have from Rivera Money is that it's more of the retail product, right? It's geared towards people who are working nine to five jobs who, you know, maybe love DeFi, but can't fully commit to it. Right. You know, I mean, I personally, I personally use it, even though, you know, I check crypto every day, but, and I'll get into how I use it um, later on in the show when we're kind of showing the vaults and things like that. But, you know, you touched on the things with, with DeFi in the understanding. And I think a little bit of it is education, but I think also, it's, it's so foreign. It's almost like a, a new language for people to where it can be overwhelming. It can be um, difficult to understand. You know, I mean, it, just the wallet creation itself is so foreign to people. Bank tellers have always handled that for people, right? What do you mean I have to create an account, right? And then you got to talk about switching chains and make sure you don't send this USDC to that address. And, you know, you're doing all these different things. And I think, again, my purpose of this channel and everything has just kind of been to slow it down for people, put it in a visual format um, and, and allow people to see, okay, I'm brand new to this stuff. What do I do once I get to the platform? So that's kind of really what I want to dive into right now. So if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen um, on the actual Rivera Money website, and we can actually start walking users through um, what the platform is and how, you know, what are the vaults and what do, what can users take advantage of and why are there benefits to using Rivera Money? Sure. Let me see if I can maximize yours. Turn this. So this is what the home screen looks like. And uh, here you can see a list of vaults, or I should say investment products. Uh, let's go uh, here. So here you see uh, different DEXs on different chains where you can, uh, uh, you, we have the vaults for them. Uh, if you are a liquidity provider, so of course you know, if you are into DeFi, you know that if you are providing liquidity on any of the DEXs, you are generating returns from their liquidity returns. So uh, let's assume uh, we have a Swapsicle. So we go into Swapsicle and we see a list of three pools which we are having. So these are the pools which, which are there on Swapsicle DEX. So a user gets to see that if, if they want to generate returns from any of these pools, for example, let's say slush WK loss. So they go into this pool and uh, normally what users will have to do, so I, I would like to explain a bit about concentrated liquidity here. So uh, all of our DEXs are concentrated liquidity DEXs, Swapsicle is one of them. And uh, just a short note about how they work. Uh, initially when Uniswap V2 came, how they worked was 
you added liquidity in any pool let's say weth usdt and what happened was your liquidity was spread across the entire uh, liquidity range i mean the price right but what happened with uniswap v3 or the concentrated liquidity dexes is that you have also had to select a specific price range for which you wanted to add the liquidity so this adds a lot of complexity for new users because they don't understand what price range to select what happens when you go when the price goes out of price range and things like that so that is why uh, there is a certain class of defi products called uh, liquidity managers or alm protocols which exist and what they do is they add users liquidity on their behalf and they maintain the range of the liquidity in such a way that liquidity is always in uh, in range or uh, basically let's say uh, you have a token and the token price is at 2000 so your range is between $1000 and $3000 and the point behind that is that if you are not in the range you are not earning the trading fee which is uh, being accumulated by the liquidity pool so uh, why folks need liquidity managers is that uh, you are always in the range and when you are going outside of the range the the liquidity managers uh, rebalance the position for you and they make it inside the range again so you are always earning the liquidity rewards or i should say the swap fee or the trading fee or the lp rewards and you are also earning any other incentives which are there for the specific decks for example if you are uh, providing liquidity on swapsicle you are also earning slush rewards if you are so uh, so this is a simple example you have slush wt loss pool so this is a pool uh, this is a liquidity pool on swapsicle uh, these are the two tokens and you see that uh, uh, the the pool is in range i mean uh, the pool currently contains 49% slush tokens and 51% wt loss tokens so the thing is uh, the price keeps moving and whenever the price moves your uh, uh, the thing is uniswap v3 is that your liquidity composition changes so that's why you need liquidity managers what we did is we simplified this a bit more further and we created a vault with a single token deposit so what happens is you have wtlos because you are a telos blockchain user so most likely you have wtlos you just use your wtlos to uh, deposit your tokens and then uh, once you deposit you have your holdings and you are start you start to generate yields so what this what this does is let's say compared to uh, what normally you would do to add liquidity and generate yields is uh, you go on the dex you approve token 1 which is slush in this case you approve token 2 which is wt loss in this case then you do add liquidity and then there are also staking rewards available so you also do uh, a staking a transaction so you do four or five transactions for a layman DeFi user this is already too complicated because they are, they just they are just lost on how are these things functioning why are they are doing why are they doing so many transactions and things like that with Rivera, what happens is you just do a single transaction your money or in this case your WTL loss gets deposited in a single vault and from there, uh, whatever is done is done by the Rivera automation and the Rivera vaults. So, so the smart contracts take your WTL loss deposit. They swap WTL loss in a certain ratio so that you already have both the tokens, slush and WTL loss, and they start earning yields. Which time when there is uh, trading done on Swapsicle Dex, you are earning trading rewards. So the Rivera vaults also auto compound these rewards. In addition to that, they also frequently rebalance the range. So currently, this is a, a steady, steady spread strategy. So you have a 50-50 allocation. So in this case, whenever the price moves of slush with respect to WTL loss, and let's say at a certain point of time, you have slush at 70% and WTL loss at 30%, the vault will rebalance. So you will again have 50-50% allocation. So these are the things which Vault does on the back side of things so that the users don't have to worry about it. And when they withdraw their funds, they again can withdraw their funds directly in the uh, base asset or in this case, WTLOS. So all of the hassles have been removed 
and they can provide uh, and DeFi users can provide liquidity in a way which is very simple, very user intuitive, and they don't have to understand all the nitties and gritties of concentrated liquidity, liquidity pools and things like that. And <clears throat> this also helps the DeFi ecosystem in a broader way because all of the DEXs get liquidity without uh, uh, giving a real pain point to the users because of course, as we know that there are two types of users in DeFi ecosystem. One is the users which are uh, very DeFi native and the others are users which are just trying to learn DeFi or just trying to invest in crypto. So for the users who are just trying to invest in crypto or just trying to learn DeFi, this is very convenient for them as opposed to figuring things out on their own, uh, Googling things, using chat GPT and things like that. And even if you do chat GPT, it will just confuse you. Uh, trust me on that. If, if you just ask any GPT for that matter, how to provide liquidity and stuff like that, you'll get confused because there are so many terms which you will not be knowing. And then you will be Googling every term itself and it becomes so overly complicated. And the whole problem with DeFi industry is that we have made things so complicated that it is very difficult for an average layman to come into the industry and use the industry, right? So now we are having things which can simplify the industry. We are having, we are working on, we as an industry are working on things so that the user experience can simplify so that we can onboard the next billion users on the DeFi. Because our premise as a DeFi industry is that we are a parallel banking ecosystem. We can never be a parallel banking ecosystem if our users get confused in the first three steps, right? So you, we have to work harder all of the protocols have to ensure that the UX is very simple so that even our parents can understand how things work. And like you can just try to explain how DeFi works to your parents and you, you will realize how complicated it is uh, because uh, you, uh, most of us are Gen Zs or millennials and we are still very okay with technical advancements, but our parents are not. And they are the guys with the most liquidity so uh, uh, regardless of uh, we knowing tech or not, they have the most money in the market. And if you want to onboard them or if you want to convince them that you should also have a allocation of your portfolio in DeFi, we have to make things simpler for them. So yeah, I mean, that's how Rivera works. Absolutely. <clears throat> that was a great explanation of the platform itself. And just for the users, I, I just want to kind of go over the evolution of liquidity, if you will. So when, when Uniswap and Bancor and they all designed these AMMs, originally how it worked was it was your, your liquidity. Like let's say you deposited an asset. That asset was spread out from zero, which the price was never going to go to, to infinity, which the price was never going to go to, right? So the optimization of liquidity just wasn't really there. Sure, you had less in permanent loss because, you know, your range was much larger, but you weren't earning as many fees. So what they did is they designed concentrated liquidity and exactly in the name, you pick the range that you would like. So let's say, again, we're, we're, on, we're using Telos. We'll just use Telos USDC, for example. So if you had Telos and you deposited Telos when it was 24 cents, okay, and you deposited USDC, you would need 50% of each asset, okay, and then you would deposit those assets. And then depending upon the price of Telos, it would determine whether you were going to get more USDC. So basically, think this is the best way I can explain an AMM. Think of it as a giant order book of many orders, right? So you have these micro orders every time the price moves up or down. If it goes down, you're going to have more of Telos, the volatile asset. If it goes up, you have more of the stablecoin because you're selling as the price goes up and you're buying as the price goes down. Now, with concentrated liquidity, you have the set ranges. If price falls out of the designated range that you gave, you're no longer earning fees, meaning no farm rewards, no swap fees, anything like that. So with Rivera Money, the great thing about this, folks, is that you don't have to worry about ever falling out of the range because they're managing it for you. They're ensuring that it's taking the rewards and selling, you know, if it's slush Telos, obviously, you know, on Swapsicle, you're earning both Telos and slush. So sometimes they'll sell the rewards of slush 
for Telos to rebalance your position as it's constantly fluctuating in price. But you can go on with your day. You don't have to be staring at this thing. You don't have to worry about if you're falling out of the range. The rewards are already handled for you and they're rebalanced within the LP position. And like Akshay said, the easiest part is you can go in with Telos and come out with Telos. You have an APR that's doing its thing, but you don't have to worry about, did I fall out of the range today? Oh, you know, I had a family emergency come up and now I'm not earning none of that stuff. You just get it done. And my personal strategy I enjoy because we're going to get to this next. I want to talk about X Riv and Riv is that you guys are doing your sort of pre pre launch pre mine uh, of the token with the rewards on the platform. Um, but I'll take my Telos rewards and I'll just put it in the Telos S Telos, whatever. And again, it's just depositing Telos. I don't have to do a swap for S Telos. I don't have to balance the assets before I get into the position. So that's another kind of luxury that I just keep adding those rewards into that same pool. And now I can earn X rib, which will eventually become rib. If Akshay, you want to kind of touch on that for a sec. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th that's the whole point that you don't have to swap your assets. You don't have to worry about things going out of range. You don't have to worry about your LP fees, which you really want to uh, auto compound or stuff like that because everything is already getting done for you and all the rewards are getting accumulated in the base token which is uh, telos for this uh, for this instance so it becomes really easy for you to generate returns and and this is uh, i mean i'm not even counting the huge amount of aprs which you are getting in the rivera tokens but uh, uh, th that's i think a, a separate question for that matter but all of the rewards which you are getting natively all of those tokens are being accumulated in the native token. So it becomes very simple for you to add liquidity to any uh, decentralized exchange for that matter. Earn rewards, auto compound your rewards, and ensure that your impermanent loss or IL is at the minimum. Because that is something which I didn't touch upon, but yeah, IL is one of the uh, really important factors when you are adding liquidity into any uh, automated market maker. And with concentrated liquidity, your IR enhances. So in a sense, if you are providing liquidity in a zero to infinity range, uh, there is a standard IR and uh, and do, there are some numbers. Like if there is a 50% price drop, you have a 5% of IR. But if you are doing, uh, if you're adding uh, liquidity in a concentrated range, your IR also amplifies along with your yield. So there is a sweet spot where you are earning more yields but you are uh you are not getting uh downsided by a lot of iron and that is the sweet spot we work in so all of our vaults i mean we have different kinds of vaults we have steady uh, steady strategies where we have a 50 percent to 200 price ranges we have uh, something called asymmetric strategies where let's say uh in the example case I showed, uh, you have two tokens, Slush and Telos, and let's say you are bullish on Slush, uh, uh, and you believe as a user that uh, Slush is a token which is good, going to do well in the near uh, mid to long term. So what you can do is, you can have a 75-25 allocation, 75% allocation in the Slush token, and 25% allocation in the Telos token. And we have walls like that, called asymmetric walls. So, the vaults will ensure that your allocation is always at 75 25 and they rebalance accordingly and this ensures that you are also doing trading alongside earning the yields from the liquidity uh, as, as well as you do the liquidity providing so i mean uh, you can also pro, uh, in essence have uh, trading strategies incorporated with your liquidity mining strategy or your farming strategy and you can continue to generate rewards on your base token without having to worry about anything and that is something which is very important uh, going forward because if you look at dexes and how dexes function in DeFi, dexes are one of the three most important pillars of the DeFi, right and uh, i mean there is dexes there is lending protocols and there is retaking and currently, if you look by market cap, these are the three most important pillars of DeFi. 
and all of the trading volume uh, is done by the dexes so every single person who comes to defi or in general who comes to web3 and uh, starts using a wallet of their own they they immediately immediately use a dex because that is the first place they'll go to they want to buy something right so you cannot eliminate the importance of dexes from the uh, ecosystem of defi right everything goes from dex even for that matter uh, all of the bigger protocols or all of the yield generating protocols use dex to generate their yield so since everyone is coming to dexes and everyone is using dexes so other than uh, uh, the native feature of dex which is uh, swapping assets the liquidity addition provide uh, the liquidity liquidity addition part can be done by liquidity managers who are efficient at it who can make things very simple who also ensure that dexes are getting enough liquidity so that their own slippages and other metrics of the swap are getting through and that is something which is very important for the growth of uh, uh, dexes in long term because uh, you really want to have simpler simpler ecosystem right you don't want to have complications and uh, we know that a lot of uh, people in the ecosystem are already very very uh, well versed with defi but that's a, that's the thing we want to onboard the next billion people in defi and they are not that well versed they really but they they are the they are the people who will be using dexes they are the people who will be providing liquidity and liquidity is so much important in the in in the dexes ecosystem because if you don't have liquidity in certain pools uh, you will have a very high slippage and then it becomes really challenging because a certain someone will say that oh i really want to swap uh, slush tokens for telos tokens i can do it on a sec i can do it on binance right or i can do it somewhere else so why should i use blockchain at all right I, i'll just open a bybit account or a binance account or somewhere else and i'll do it there but that's the thing the whole premise of crypto was uh, censorship resistant uh, the the whole premise of crypto was uh, that your own keys uh, ownership of your own tokens and those things happen when you use a dex like swapsicle right so when you are using dexes you want the best trades for you you don't want to swap $100 for some other token and you uh, end up with $98 with a 2% slippage that is very bad for you and uh, you'll do it once and you will realize that um, why should i even do this right uh, i have a 2% slippage i am better with the second right so uh, that is why you need liquidity and that is why you need concentrated liquidity because uh, the concentrated liquidity model even minimizes the slippage because most of the liquidity providers are ensuring that their liquidity is in the active range and which effectively means that you are having a 10% of the slippage which you would otherwise have when, if you were using a sex or a decentralized exchange with a full range liquidity so in a way this is a symbiotic relationship between liquidity managers and dexes dexes need liquidity managers so that uh their traders are happy with the low slippages and also their liquidity providers are happy because they are generating higher yields on their base assets and liquidity managers need dexes because of course they have the the, the, the entire product is made on dexes and they have to generate yields using the dexes so in a way it's very good for industry and uh, we have seen in the market that this is the model which is going forward and all of the chains all of the ecosystems have adopted that even with v3 i mean i i, I won't go and talk about v4 and hooks and other stuff but yeah uh, this is how yeah. the industry is progressing absolutely absolutely yeah sorry we're crunched on time here i definitely want to get to x rib and rib and if you have any sort of uh, update for your tge uh, for the token but let's kind of talk what is the token what will it be used for um, and how can users start earning it today uh, sure. So, uh, uh, regarding tokens, uh, uh, our token is RIB. Uh, currently, we are having our pre-mine program. So, the pre-mine token is called XRIB. 
and uh, we have already announced that the XRIV tokens can be converted into RIV tokens in a one is to one ratio. So if you are pre mining our rewards, you are getting if essentially you are getting the Rivera tokens. Uh, a bit about the tokenomics. I mean, the total supply is capped at 100 million and uh, uh, we will be releasing our uh, detailed economics very soon. The TG is expected in quarter three of 2023, uh, 2024. So it's uh, three, four months down the line. So that's a bit about our uh, tokens. Uh, now, how can users earn XRIV right now? So if you look at the Rivera vaults, you will see insane rewards, uh, which we are currently giving on all of the pools or all of the vaults. So I mean, the bare minimum is 300 to 400 percent. So if you are providing liquidity in any of the Rivera vaults, you are earning a huge amounts of RIV tokens or XRIV tokens, which will be converted into RIV tokens at the point of TG. Um, so yeah, that, that's a very uh, brief intro about how our tokens work. Okay, so you guys will be releasing your tokenomics here shortly. No, yeah. no uh, sneaky hints or anything you want to give, but it'll, it'll be a utility token within the platform. Oh yeah, sorry, I missed that. So yeah, it's a utility token as well as a governance token. So uh, Rivera will be a DAO, and all of the governance uh, decisions will be made by our IV token holders. Uh, also, uh, our IV token captures all of the revenue generated by uh, the Rivera vault. So uh, we do take a performance and an exit fee on some of the vaults. So all of the revenue which we generate are uh, will be incorporated into uh, the RIV tokens, either by uh, burning the tokens or uh, in some other way. So uh, the Rivera holders or the community holders will be getting benefits of these things. And other than that, we are committed to do a fair token distribution. So uh, it won't be like, uh, you know, uh, 30 percent or 40 percent is with the team and investors. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a fair uh, token distribution model. A lot of our community members have been with us since our test day. We have already allocated a lot of tokens for our uh, testnet users. And uh, so that is one part of the airdrop. The other part of the token allocation is the pre mine. And we are, I mean, I wouldn't say the exact number, but we are committing to, uh, I, I should say, uh, in borderline figures of 10% to our all of the uh, uh, pre-mined uh, token reports. So that that amounts to roughly 10 million of the tokens uh, of the Rivera token. So those are the tokens which will be allocated to the people who are uh, participating in the currently the pre-mined rewards. And other than that, there will uh, there will be a provision of retroactive airdrops. So we uh, again, this is sort of an alpha because we haven't released this information yet. But yeah, uh, th there will be another provision for early users and community members of the ecosystem uh, so that uh, they become valuable valuable members of the Rivera DAO and uh, participate in our governance decisions going forward once our team is done. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Have you guys set on a launch price or anything yet or are you still kind of deciding on all that? Uh, so uh, the pre-mined tokens are being given currently at uh, a valuation of 10 million and uh, so essentially uh, all of the Rivera tokens are at the valuation of 0.1 dollars and uh, how much sir? I didn't hear. Uh, the Rivera tokens of uh, 10 million is the valuation at which we are giving the uh, pre-mined Rivera tokens so effectively we have 100 million uh, supply total supply so every x riv amounts to 0.1 dollars so that is the number which we are on which we are currently calculating all the rewards and uh, so 10 cents 10 cents uh, yeah 10 cents. Ten sorry cents. did you say point 0.1 sorry i'm trying to keep up yeah. i'm bad today a different headset on yeah, yeah. 10 cents 10 cents 10 cents okay. 10 cents is the value which we are currently allocating the rewards gotcha gotcha okay cool well i tell you what we have one more question for you is there anything that rivera is working on currently that we weren't able to kind of go over or some stuff that maybe you guys see happening in the future. Um, I know stuff's innovating all the time and you guys are, you know, constantly adjusting, but is there anything that's currently in the works right now that we may see in the near future, or kind of the distant future? 
yeah actually so i forgot to mention this but uh how rivera is different from other liquidity managers is that we create this erc4626 standard vaults so what happens is uh when you add liquidity in a uniswap v3 model liquidity position you get an nft and by definition nft is non fungible and you cannot use it further in the ecosystem but what our vaults do is that they convert this nft into a erc20 token or what we called as the yield tokens of rivera right so these yield tokens can be used further in the ecosystem as an erc20 or a fungible token so if you have a position on uniswap v3 or any of the folks of uniswap v3 uh, you have a fixed position in the nft but we convert that position into erc20 so with this you can trade these positions uh you can use this positions to borrow collateral as a minting asset you can use this positions to create strategies like delta neutral strategies uh even our uh, one of the delta neutral strategies is live on testnet and we'll be going um to mainnet very soon with those strategies so what we have essentially done is that we have created this composable uh, composable defi ecosystem where uniswap v3 nfts are converted into erc20 tokens which are rivera yield tokens and these yield yield tokens can be used, can be used further in the ecosystem to do all sorts of things so basically you can transfer uh, swap these assets in the market you can use these yield tokens as a collateral to borrow more assets and use it further in the ecosystem so let's say you are a liquidity provider and uh, let's say there is a liquid staking pool uh estelos w delos right so what normally would happen is you have you know that estelos is the lsd of uh telos token so you would put liquidity in there and then uh, your liquidity is just stuck you you can't really use it somewhere else right but what we do is if you deposit estelos w delos liquidity in the rivera pools you get this rivera yield token and what we are building is that you can deposit this rivera yield token and borrow any stable coin which you can use it further in the ecosystem to enhance your yields you can use it for perp trading you can use it for you know lending or any other vaults for that matter so this is something we are working on parallelly in addition to that we are also working on uh, staking rewards so again these as as i mentioned these are yield tokens uh, so we are talk uh, we are in talks with uh, all of our dex and chain partners and we will be going live very soon with our uh, staking uh, page or the earn page where you can stake your rivera tokens or the yield tokens and you will also earn your uh, uh, other rewards like for example uh, in the slush uh, telos pool if you stake those tokens you will also earn additional slush tokens and telos tokens right so this is something awesome. which we have been working on and this will be live very soon that sounds that sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean I always kind of thought that, you know, DeFi is kind of gotten to the point where it, it's constantly innovating, right? But there's that point where you're kind of like, well, there's kind of a inefficient capital over here, right? Once I'm in the vault, now what can I do? And I really like that aspect of okay, now I can go over here and use it as collateral because it is real money, right? There there's yeah. nothing fake about the deposit you have within the vault, right? That's real money, that's backed by, you know, I mean the liquidity is there, right? So now it's kind of that next stage where you can take that and collateralize it. And I think that's super cool because the lending platforms really do that well as well. And I think I saw you guys talking about Delta Neutral Head strategies coming in um, and things of that nature to where you can really, really optimize your liquidity in a safe way. You know, if you're, if you're dealing in Telos, S Telos, I'm not, this is not financial advice, but that's much more stable and in, in a, in a better way to use your collateral than say, you know, getting in, you're like, eh, maybe we're at the top, maybe we're not. And you start getting in those volatile assets and they drop, you know, now you've got a lot more kind of babysitting to do. And, you know, I, I really, when I, when I talk to people about Rivera Money and your guys' platform, it's all kind of about the ease and the easy use in the DeFi, right? You don't need to monitor it all the time. You don't need to babysit it. They're doing it for you. Sure, you pay a performance fee, but if I were to hand you a hundred dollars and say, you know, hey, I gotta give, I gotta take three dollars of that, it's like, of course, you know, it's like paying taxes. If you win the lottery, okay, whatever, I'll pay taxes on it, right? There's yeah. a performance because you guys developed it, right? So it's not like anybody. I've never seen anybody in crypto, and and this is to the honest truth. Yeah, you got your rugs and things like that. 
but for the good builders in in the in the space, nobody's nobody's cutting people off at the knees, right? You know, we're giving you the yield that's presented. We're not nobody's taking a large percentage of this, but there it, there is work done. There's the smart contracts, the audits, the security to make sure that these are legit platforms. Um, to where there has to be some sort of yield created or, you know, the product would go to zero. You know, there'd be no use to have it. So that's the way I view it. It's like these performance fees and things like that. Folks, you're paying for what you're getting. Trust me, nobody's cutting you at the knees and taking your profit. It's just these are how the platforms work. And again, it, that's how the ecosystem's created and why you'd want to own the token and things like that. So, again, I really appreciate you coming on, Akje. I think you guys had a great platform. Um, super excited for the collateral stuff that you have coming on in the future. Is there any last thoughts that you have uh, before we get going? Yeah, so, I mean, a couple of small points. I mean, for folks who are new to DeFi, I would encourage you to explore things. Uh, get on uh, your crypto of the exchange. Use a MetaMask or any, any wallet for that matter. Start using DeFi products and you will learn and uh, who knows, you, you'll make the next uh, Pendle or the next uh, DeFi revolution, right? And for the folks who are into DeFi, uh, I, I should say you, you, you should be always looking on for innovation and the innovation in which you can, you know, you can uh, use the product or use the services in a way you see fit and uh, which is the most uh, I should say efficient because DeFi, as, as Brian said already, DeFi is always evolving. Things are moving at a fast pace. Everything is moving. I mean, the blockchains are moving, the L2s are moving, right? You you have everything every, uh, you have everything new every day, right? You have Bitcoin L2s coming up, right? You have NFTs of some sort and you have things like that coming up. So <clears throat> get, get, get there, get, Get in the shoes of a DeFi user. Use all of the platforms which you see and try to learn about things. Try to use all of the platforms and you will be rewarded in the long term. Apart from the knowledge. I mean, of course, knowledge is essential because the industry is still very new, I should say. I mean, we still have like, I don't know, 10 million people in the industry, but I still feel it's very new. Uh, just, just try your different platforms learn how to generate yield on your crypto because that's your only hedge against inflation right so that those are the closing thoughts uh, check out swapsicle and rivera uh, if you really want to be on the forefront of uh, whatever the things are happening on the texas side of things because i really believe that swapsicle guys are doing a lot of things uh, they are also coming up with newer and newer things so that they can you know uh, provide you with the best uh, decentralized exchange uh, experience and uh, Rivera is committed to providing the best uh, liquidity providing experience so uh, just check us out uh, read the docs and uh, feel free to reach out to any of the teams you feel. yeah absolutely well thanks again Akshay for coming on and uh, definitely guys if you're if you're looking for something that can kind of manage yourself a little bit more Maybe you're busy with family, you got work going on. Definitely check out Rivera Money. Um, you can follow him on X at Rivera underscore money and uh, check out the platform, guys. Again, it's all about getting your feet wet. I, I talk to people about this all the time that, you know, oh, there's rugs in DeFi. There's this, there's folks. When the Internet first started, you could go to a website that somebody just made up, order a product and it would just never show up. This is nothing new. This is the cycle of new technology. There are good products and there are bad products. There are good builders and there are scammers. Crypto is just following the, the, the methodology that's been around for ages. So again, it's about understanding things. Think of, and again, you, you think I'm crazy, but creating a wallet was no different than in 1995 asking somebody to create an email address. They thought you were insane. They're like, what do you mean this at sign? And this is crazy. And and now think about it. You got you got X, you got Twitter, you got or Twi X and Twitter are the same thing. But you got TikTok, you got all these things and logins and stuff like that. Baby steps, right? Just take it in baby steps. Take a little bit in. Nobody's telling you to put your life savings into DeFi, but get your feet wet because it is the future of finance. Whether whether the 
the regulatory bodies of this world, whatever they decide, they, they're leaning towards blockchain technology, whether it's a CBDC, hope not, but you know what? It's probably going to be in the mix. But you have to understand that once all these rails connect, you can do so many things with tokenization. So just having that leg up on people of understanding how to create a wallet, how to send um, funds and what these platforms mean will put you so far ahead of people. And again, people like us, we're here for you guys. If you have questions, again, I was the former CEO of Swapsicle Dex, but I have nothing to sell you. We're just here to give information, help you guys out, show you some visual things and things like that. And I, I tell people this all the time on everybody who comes on. I really, truly believe that the builders, the good builders in this space just want to see the space thrive and continue to grow. And I'm not going to sit here and say there's not bad actors. There are. You got to do your due diligence. You got to ask people. There's so many helpful people in this space. And I really think that that's what will make this grow in the long run is people continuing to show up in good morality, right? Be the good person. Be the future that you want to see in DeFi. And, and it'll happen, you know? Yeah, you're going to lose some people along the road, you know, along the way. It, 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 it's unfortunate part of new technology. It happens. But again, the space will continue to push forward. And people like Akche and the builders in this space will continue to build products um, that will help you optimize um, your earnings. Because the last thing you want to do is put your money in a bank and earn 0.3% while they're making the 7%, folks. They're making it. Okay, it exists out there. They're utilizing it, right? They're just giving you peanuts. Whereas DeFi says, here's the bag of peanuts and you decide, right? That's the main difference. And that's really what I learned about DeFi and why it's different. So again, Akshay, thank you so much for coming on, bud. Um, we'll have to have you on again sometime, maybe around the launch time of the token. We can kind of get people informed about all that stuff. So again, Take care, and uh, we're going to jump into the market insights segment next. Thanks a lot, Brian, for having me. It was a pleasure. You bet. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All righty, folks. Let's jump into the market because since the last time I've seen you, we did some things in the market. I tell you what, we were jumping around, and I'm going to show you why it's important to check your levels and anticipate price at certain levels, right? It's not always going to do what you think it is. All right, let me take a little sip of water here. All right, so let's start with Bitcoin on the daily chart. Again, when we talked last week, we were looking to come down into this zone to sweep out some of these lows. I think we talked about in the last video that I wouldn't be surprised if we came up here right before the halvening and took out this high first and then came down, but it looks like from this range, I actually think this is more bullish price action because you're leaving the even highs up above, right? So a lot of times what you'll do, the market makers will take the liquidity. And I think this is a perfect, you know, if I was controlling the markets, this is probably what I would do as well, is I would want to take this liquidity coming into the halvening. People start thinking, oh, no, we're dropping down, we're dropping down, when really we're just coming in to fill some of this price action in this gap here. So again, sweeping these lows, liquidity, I had it pinned out this morning. Looks like we're already dipping through. I'd still like to see come in and take this low out. Again, people have their stops below these lows, right? So the market moves off of liquidations and people stops um, and things like that. So again, this blue box still holds here. And again, you don't need to blindly buy when we get in here. You'll see, you know, on a lower time frame, is it making bullish price action? Am I wanting to enter in? Once we get into the level of interest, again, we have even lows built up down here. Everything's fair game at this point, but overall, we're obviously still in a bullish market. There's no denying that we've been making higher highs. Um, but again, you need to rebalance price and you need to kind of cool off the engines. You can't go straight up forever. Jumping on to Ethereum, <clears throat> we came down and hit the price we've kind of been looking for for a while. It's been holding it nicely. We'll have to see what happens today. Um, again, we don't want to see a candle body close below this level. We've been holding it, I mean, literally about to the dollar here. Um, none of these candles have closed below this area of interest here. Um, we did wick down, come take some more liquidity into this gap here. But again, we'll have to see nothing bullish showing up yet. But this was the area sort of, of interest that we were looking for. If we continue down, we'll start, you know, 
down here is another consolidation area and another gap that we could fill in um, down here. But as you guys can see, I mean, how many times has the market come down? It takes the lows out, boom, right there, and then it continues on to go higher. So again, that's sort of what we're looking for in the market. Those are the signatures in price that allow price to then move higher, right? You need to take liquidity in order to move things higher. If you just go straight up for it forever, well, the longs are the only ones making money. And yeah, that's great for your spot portfolio, but that's not how markets work. And that's not how the markets move. So Ethereum, again, we're holding this level for now. We'll have to see how this daily candle reacts here. If we start closing below it, I'm going to expect some lower prices. Doesn't mean we can't then come kick back up here to take out some internal range liquidity here and then continue on lower. But again, I want to see this level hold. I like, I like the price action here that we have so far, but again, we'll have to see how this daily candle closes here. Next up, we have this XRP. We've taken the first level of liquidity we touched on. I said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to call, you know, moon boys, moon shots. When everybody else is talking that we're going to the moon, chances are we're not. Okay, keep that in your back pocket. So when everybody over here, oh, we're going, we're going to $10. We're going. Come on, man. Jeez, please. But anyways, this was the first level. I said, we got to come take some of this liquidity. I wouldn't be surprised. We still see 40 cents. Call me crazy, but I could even see us coming down here and taking out these lows. It's all going to be dependent upon once we get down to this level. I don't think this downtrend is done. I think we come down to at least fill in this gap below these lows over here. Um, again, we did take this was a pretty key low here. You know, a lot of people would have put their stops after this low was taken. But again, it's just building up more liquidity. One, two, three. And again, the thing to know about equal lows in, in, in a relatively similar spot is not everybody has their stop directly below this low, right? They may have it down below this low and think they're safe. They may have it over here, you know, so there's different areas where, <coughs> excuse me, where people are going to have their stop losses and the market makers know that. Um, but again, I still, I'd still like to see at least 40. Um, again, there's nothing saying that we can't come all the way down to 20 to fill some of this in. Because again, when you see, let's just take a look at the true reversal levels, right? Reversal levels are very violent. They're very quick in, quick out. Okay. That's just, again, there's more to it than that. But if you can just grasp that concept of how the market, when it turns around, just study where it turns around and how it looks you'll be miles ahead of the competition without knowing anything about trading. If you can just understand that when price is hitting and taking out levels that look more even like these, and yes, yeah, 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 this was the SEC, blah, 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 whatever you want, whatever story and narrative you need to tell yourself. But this area of liquidity is a very lucrative area for the market makers. They can come take everyone out, especially after a big move up like that. Okay. So again, I just, I didn't like this. I don't like all these lows being built up like this. And there's a lot of people out there. I don't want to say a lot of people, but there's people out there, you know, drawing, you know, trend lines like this and saying, oh, you know, oh, and now it's broken, right? So now they're going to turn bearish. So if I'm a market maker, right? And I, and, and everybody's saying, oh, we rejected off that kind of come down here and then push through, right? That would be much more lucrative for the market makers because everybody who thinks that this trend line breaks and we're going to seven cents or whatever is going to get stopped out. The market makers are constantly working in the opposite direction of where you think they're going. That's how they can move the markets and be profitable. Okay. So again, we'll have to wait and see for more price, more prices and things like that. But I'm not convinced that the down is done yet. Um, definitely overall bullish. There's nothing. I'm not trying to sit here and say we're going into a deep bear market or anything like that. We just, you know, we need to pull back. We need to take some liquidity levels and then we'll kind of continue on. But my next level, again, we're looking for kind of that 40 cents area and we'll see how we react from there. And the reason I say let's see how we react from there is let's go over to AVEX. This is a prime example. This blue box is where we were talking about potentially being bullish. Now, what do you notice about when the blue box is filled? It's violent through, 
right? It doesn't even mess around. When they cut through a level, they cut through the level, right? So if I drop down to like a four hour time frame, there's no buying opportunity in here, right? When this gap is completely filled, it's just like a knife through hot butter. It's It just knifes through, right? So that's why I say don't just set limit orders and say, oh, well, Brian said, you know, Brian said that this is a level that, you know, it's got. No, I didn't. I said this is the level of interest. It doesn't mean that the market has to stop there. But what I will say is the market will definitely show you its hand when it gets to a level of interest. OK. So, again, what I mean by a level of interest is, like, OK, when we go below this low here. It doesn't mean you have to automatically buy below that low because you can continue down. But when you get to the lower time frames, what do you notice about once we took out this low here, we made an inversion fair value gap here. And again, if I'm saying things that you guys aren't familiar with, you can go to the channel, check out all the videos. I explain all these different terms and things like that through shorts, through other videos and things like that. But once we go through a level of interest, we're bullish, right? That's number one. We've gone below an old low. We're bullish. We've gone below an old low. Now let's see if there's a signature in price to violate this once bearish fair value gap, right? So this used to be a bearish fair value gap right here from this low, from this high here to this low here. This was a bearish fair value gap. Well, when you violate it with a candle body close above, right, on this candle right here, this now becomes a bullish inversion fair value gap. Why? Trend was bullish. We went below an old low. And then we violated a bearish fair value gap, making this a bullish inversion fair value gap. This now becomes real support. Okay, and as you can see, you don't have a candle body close below this. So again, identify the trend, look for key levels, right? So this is what I said with Abex. We are bullish, right? There's no denying that we've been in a bullish market. So this is a level of interest. This is a level of interest. It's not a level of entry. It's a level of interest. Once we get there, how do we react? We rip right through it. No need to buy. You wait. Okay. What could be our next level of interest? Well, we have this low over here, right? Let's go back to a daily. We have this level of interest down here, which comes back in to fill some of this gap in. So this is this would be an area that I'd be looking for next, right? Because what I saw on the four hours, as you can see, okay, we're in a bullish market, right? We went below this low here, okay? My eyes immediately go to this fair value gap from this low to this high. Okay, let's see if we violate it. We don't. We don't have a candle body close above. That's why I put this X here. This means that we got to the fair value gap and we rejected it. Price doesn't want to go higher. This is what I'm talking about, what I mean by a footprint in price. Okay? So when you get back to those levels, you can look to see, okay, are we pushing through this, right? Bullish trend, went below an old low. Where's the inversion fair value gap or the break of structure? It doesn't exist, right? This, do, this gets projected with a wick. That means they're still willing to sell once we get back to this price level. They're not quite ready to push through this and change direction. So again, what does that mean for me as a buyer that's looking to buy these assets in a bullish market? Well, I'd go to the next level of interest, which would be down below this low. Or give me some price action that shows me that we're done going down. Okay, so that's the key takeaway from all of this is find your point of interest, but don't just blindly buy or blindly sell anything like that. You have to go in once you get to these levels and make a decision based off of that. All right, so that's AVEX. Let's jump over to Telos. Telos, sort of same thing here. Um, once we came down through here, again, we've talked about the bullish inversion fair value gap once you get it. I also 
forgot to mention, I've said it in other videos, but when you get a bullish inversion fair value gap, you want it to be by itself. And what do I mean by by itself? Well, there's a gap between here and here. There's a gap between here and here. <coughs> That's not, those aren't the inversion fair value gaps that you want. You want some sort of inversion fair value gap that's by itself, okay? And again, what is the target of a bullish inversion fair value gap? The next most recent high. So as you can see, Telos had one right here, right? We went below these lows. Follow me here. We went below these lows, and then we inverted this fair value gap that caused the run on the lows. Where's the target? Right above this high. And where does it go? Right to literally to the tip. You have to take profit. You have to take profit. If you're going to trade an inversion fair value gap model, you can't expect this to go to $2 just because of this inversion fair value gap. You need to then see, okay, inversion fair value gap happens. My target is here. I have to take profit here, some profit. And then you can set your stop loss at break even from there. If that's, that's a trading model, right? That's a trading model that you can use. It's just Look for a run on liquidity, look for a fair value gap, turn to an inversion fair value gap, and then target the most recent high or low if you're shorting, okay? So again, as you can see, it literally just comes to that, takes that liquidity out, and then continues on down. So for Telos, for me, overall macro view, again, we'll have to see how we react over here. We're still obeying this fair value gap here with just wicks. We have yet to push through this after taking the low. So again, I'm not ready to jump right in. I would like to see maybe a little more of this filled in. Um, if you go to a higher time frame like the daily, this has been a huge level right here. So I mean, they're just filling this price action in. Look at all these gaps through here. Um, and they're just coming to rebalance it. You got to cool off even in bull markets. Go look in the, go look in the past. There's 20 to 40% pullbacks. Happens every cycle. Don't get shaken out, right? Pay attention, stay involved, but don't get shaken out and be like, oh, here comes the bear market again. We're nowhere near that. We're just pulling back. It's part of the cycles. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see maybe one more dip through here, and then we'll look, we'll look for the reaction from there um, and see if we can catch something off of that. Mantle, <clears throat> again, we talked about this last week. It did take that high, but what did I say? When you break highs, I don't want to see wicks break highs. I want bodies. One body's breaking highs. Come up here, we wick that, and I said, okay, we inverted, right? And again, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. You can go check the last video. And again, I'm not trying to be like, I'm the best trader of all time. But there are signatures in price that continue to play over and over and over again. They don't change. They can't change. Because it's, it's the fundamental basis of liquidity. It's how the market moves, okay? It's not like I'm some guru that knows something that nobody else does. It's just that I became obsessed with understanding this stuff, right? To the point where it was like, it became an obsession, but I enjoyed it. I mean, that was my thing. So whatever, I'm weird. Anyways, back to the point. Went on a little rant there. It's all good. It's going to happen. We went above this high, closed, not with a body. We wicked above and completely rejected. Okay. And then you have this fair value gap here that gets inverted. Boom, that's where you sell. Okay? Again, take liquidity with a wick, inversion fair value gap. Let me zoom in here so you guys don't think I'm making it up. Fair value gap from this low to this high, right in here. Okay? Right in here, from this high to that low, to this low right here. Fair value gap gets inverted on this candle right here, right? Candle body close below the high of this one. Boom, sell on this candle. And where are we targeting? That low, baby. We're coming back in. I told you we we're gonna come visit this, right? I didn't like all this liquidity. That trend line liquidity is gonna get taken out. Coming back to fill in this breaker over here, fill in this price inefficiency here. And that's what we've done, so on and so forth. I do like Mesa Mantle, I will say. Um, we've inverted this fair value gap, even though it's very small. And you guys will see, as you go to the charts, you'll get a feel for, um, you know, the inversion fair value gaps that feel better. And it exists right here. You see this high, 
this low is small, but it gets inverted right there, right? So we got to take some profit above this high next. Um, that would be our first take profit. But again, this is this thing's damn bullish, right? We kind of came down here, took out these lows, and then just blasted through this old high. This is what I'm talking about when I say when I get above an old high, I want candle body closes. I want them body candle closes above. Not this weak wick stuff, right? When I'm breaking through a level, I want big body candle body closes above or below if you're bearish, right? I don't want these little wicks and then you break the fair value gap. That just screams, come take these lows, okay? So again, I hope this is helping you guys. I don't know how many of you tune in to the DeFi portion. I don't know how many tune into the trading stuff. Um, I'll continue to do this stuff because again, like I said, it's all about helping somebody. Somebody someday is going to tune in, learn this stuff, and it's going to trigger them like it did me. And they're going to want to know everything there is to know about this stuff. And then there will be most people that are just like, yeah, 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 I got lucky, he's gambling, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, but I do know that it works. And if people are interested, I'm, I'll be the source that will help people. That's just truly the way I feel about it. I used to argue with people. I used to do you know, the Twitter battles and you're wrong and this and that. And it's just not worth it, man. It's not because I found out at that point in my life that I just wasn't happy with what I was doing. So I would just argue with people and I was frustrated about how things were working out. But once you get it, you don't care about anything else because you know it's going to happen and you know it plays out over and over again. Um, yeah, let's just let's end there today. I know we got a little long. Again, if you guys are interested, check out Rivera Money. Super cool platform and just kind of it's a hands off approach, but still a hands on. Right. You just don't have to be monitoring those um, positions all the time, worrying if you're falling out of ranges and things like that. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. We got a special one next week. Next week, I'm super excited. I'm an XRP OG maxi. And we're going to have Panos, the founder of the, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, Anodos platform on next week is the DeFi Dive. As everybody knows, or if you don't know, XRP, the XRPL just went with their AMM to pass. So now they have DeFi on the XRP Ledger platform. Again, controversial plat or controversial chain. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But we're going to bring it to you here. And we're going to talk about how their DeFi is just a little bit different than most EVMs and things like that. So again, I'm going to fanboy out a little bit. I've been an XRP holder since 2016. Um, I'm the OG talking X Rapid, X Via, those types of platforms. So to be interviewing one of the builders on the XRP ledger, I'm super excited about it. So make sure if you guys are into that sort of thing and kind of want to just see a different perspective of AMMs, um, and what, you know, other chains do and things like that, be sure to tune in. So thanks again, guys, so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, as always, hit me up on Telegram, X, in the chat here. But thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week.